Hello, you're here with the Anti-Fans. And you're watching Fantasy Footnotes. Today we're going to be talking about Thousand Yard Rushers, their seeming disappearance in the NFL. We're going to talk about the guys who did it last year, what they're, they're likely to repeat. Uh, yeah, and then we're going to look forward to next year and project some of the, some of the guys we see doing it coming up. Going to give you some solid locks of who's going to hit 1,000 yards this season at the end of the video. So stay tuned. Starting off, uh, first guy on our list of 1,000-yard rushers from last year was Adrian Peterson. What's the uh, case that he's going to make it again? Uh it's not a tough case. He's uh, Adrian Peterson. He's like an all-time stud. He's consensus, always a first-round pick, pretty much almost always the first overall pick. Uh, if we want to like break it down and be a little bit more factual or scientific, uh, every season that uh, he's played over 12 games, he's gotten 1,000 yards. He's only not played over 12 games twice when he was suspended, and then... One year, he played exactly 12 games and fell 30 yards short. So he's just the picture of consistency, which you already knew. Why Adrian, do you feel... Oh, yeah. If you're going to make a case that Adrian Peterson's not going to get 1,000 yards this season, uh, it's got to start with his age and the miles on the tires. Um, the guy is on the wrong side of 30. Uh, he's had almost 2,400 career carries. Uh, there aren't a lot of guys who have had that many carries in their career and continued to be 1,000-yard rushers. Um, he's going into his 10th season. Um, this could be the year that he finally plays the games and doesn't get the yards. Yeah, we compared him to kind of like a Marshawn Lynch last year, but I think I'll rather be one year late with him. So, All right, next guy on the rushing leader list from last year, Doug Martin. Is he going to be the Duggernaut or the Muscle Hamster this year? Uh, it's really hard to say. He uh, is like Mr. Two-Face. He's either like a 400-yard guy or like a 1,400-yard guy. Uh, that inconsistency, you know, obviously makes me worried. Um, they got uh, Cutter taking over the top spot there. He has a really strong history with QBs. There might be more of a focus on airing it out, potentially, with him fully in control. Got Winston coming in his second year. Evans is in his third year. It's a big year for young receivers. Uh, Safarian Jenkins potentially does something. He might finally be healthy. Um, I do like where Martin's going in terms of ADP. This might be worth the risk, but it's a huge risk. What are your, uh, what are your thoughts there? Well, the real question is, is the muscle hamster or the, the, the dugger not the guy that gets 1,400 yards? Because give me that guy every time. Um, similar to your argument about Adrian Peterson, every time the guy plays at least uh, 12 games, he gets 1,400 yards. Um, the only two years that he had a bad year uh, was primarily due to injury. If he stays healthy, um, he's been one of the best running backs around um, in his rookie year and then again last year. So um, I think Doug Martin has a good chance to do it again. Um, that's the case for him. Is the Duggernaut the 400-yard guy? The muscle so. hamster is like the 1,400-yard guy. The killer, the killer? All right. It is, it is odd to always have 400 or 1,400. Yeah, I mean, like, both those years are, like, very close to those numbers on each end of the, on the scale. Yeah. Uh, next up would be Todd Gurley breaking onto the scene last year as a rookie, hitting over 1,100 yards. So that is a pretty easy one. He was amazing last year. Um, he had just over 1,100 yards. Um, he missed four games. He had the ninth most rushes and the third most yards in those 12 games. So if you give him a full slate of games, I just don't see how he falls under 1,000. I could see him potentially getting like 1,400, 1,500 yards, honestly. Case against Todd Gurley hitting a thousand yards this year um, is all about how he started and how he finished. In the first four games that he got meaningful work, um, he was over a hundred yards, um, closer to one hundred and fifty yards most of the time. After that, he only had one other hundred yard performance. Um, most of the other games in that span, he was not um, even getting sixty yards a game. Uh, which is going to be the floor over a 16-game season to get 1,000 yards. 
So um, if the Rams offense, if the quarterback play isn't good enough to keep guys out of the box, um, teams can just key on him and, and Todd Gurley could find it hard to find room to rush. All right. So next name uh, fantasy football fans are familiar with. Uh, mostly in a negative consensus, but last year he actually kind of did something. You want to do a pro on Darren McFadden, run DMC for us? Well, uh, while it seems like Darren McFadden is probably 50 years old, he's truly only 28, which is typically right in the prime um, for a running back towards the end of the prime. Um, He's one of only three guys on this list who's ever rushed for 1,000 yards before last season. So he's going to be there again, because he's been there before. Um, Darren McFadden, solid yards per carry last year, 4.6. Um, Cowboys have a great offensive line. Um, his first year with the Cowboys, he goes over 1,000 yards. All right, a couple rebuttals. I think Darren McFadden is 50 years old, so that's one of my main cons. Uh, he's only gone over 1,000 yards twice in eight years. That's not a great percentage. 25% of the time he does it. Uh, and then the other things are just obvious. Injury history, all over the place. Doesn't manage to put a full slate of games there hardly ever in his career. Uh, and Zeke, and in general, a incredibly crowded backfield. So it's a guy I don't count on doing it again. All right, uh, next up on the list, Chris Ivory. Chris Ivory, um, really good chance he does not get those 1,000 yards again, but if you're going to see him do it, uh, his entire career has been a over four yard per carry rusher, so what, uh, he's never gotten that much work until last year, but when he did finally get the work, he maintained that average, uh, had his most yards, most carries, um, he got paid before that to go to Jacksonville uh, heavily, five for 32, $10 million guaranteed. Uh, they're probably going to want to see that investment do something. Um, Yeah. What are your thoughts on the negative? Well, the reason that Chris Ivory has never had a thousand yards before last year is health and to count on him to be healthy again this year. um, Seems like a fallacy to me. Uh, He's also in there with TJ Yeldon. TJ Yeldon had a decent rookie year. Um, I think the two of them split carries Maybe enough to keep Ivory healthy, but also enough to keep him out of the 1,000-yard rushing club. Another thing to your point is uh, the Jags had the second-fewest rushing attempts last year. So hurts my case, but interesting nugget to factor in. All right. Uh, Latavius Murray. Uh, I'm going to make the case uh, for him hitting 1,000 yards again, which is that his first year as the feature back with the Raiders, he went over 1,000 yards. Um, had a good year. They didn't bring any in any competition that was meaningful. Um, so I see him still getting a lot of the work and going over a thousand yards. All right, I like your point. I like your point. Uh, the Raiders were similar to the Jags, and they were a bottom five rushing team. Um, Murray still managed to get the third most rushes, but if the pattern continues to be more of an aerial attack, I like Carr coming into his own. Uh, Amari Cooper's another year into his career. Uh, Murray kind of like ha- his numbers have gone in the wrong direction. His yards per carry fell from over five to four yards per carry last year. And he just kind of like, it seemed like the extra work whittled him down towards the end of last year. He was a pretty consistent guy getting you like seven, eight, nine points a game. And he kind of fell off that a bit towards the end. So maybe he can't repeat to the thousand yard tune. All right, last uh, guy who got 1,000 yards last year was Devonta Freeman. You making a case that he's not going to do it again? Uh, I am, but let's hear you tell me why he's going to do it again. Number one overall non-quarterback in fantasy last year, Devonta Freeman gets a lot of work. Um, The Falcons have a good offense. It was only his second year in the league and his first year with meaningful carries, and he hit over 1,000 yards. Uh, he also makes hay in the receiving game. So even if he did just miss 1,000 yards in the rushing department, he's going to be over 1,000 all-purpose yards. He scores a lot of touchdowns. So even if, for some reason, he doesn't hit 1,000 yards, he's going to be a good fantasy investment. Uh, yeah, I mean, he came out of nowhere. He had an amazing season. He was like blockbuster all-star dude for first chunk of last year. Uh, 
But I mean, if you look a little closer, he, he had the fourth most rushes. So that's great. A lot of work. Um, he barely scratched his way over 1,000 yards. He had like 1,056 yards. Um, the receiving is a, a legit, legitimate thing. He had like, I think, the third most yards last year for an RB. So yeah, the all-purpose yards, those look nice. But we're talking, we're talking rushes here. And uh, I think that backfield could be more crowded, too. I think Tevin Coleman, uh, he had that job before he lost that job last year. He could factor in a lot more this year. All right. So that does it for guys that made it last year. Um, we're going to give you seven locks since there were seven guys last year. Um, seven is the fewest number of 1,000-yard rushers in recent memory. Um, the previous two seasons, it had been 13. And I think you said there were about 13 guys you felt like were going to do it. But we're going to give you the guys that... The seven guys we're most sure are going to do it. Lucky number sevens. All right. Um, who leads off your list? Um, so this is uh, not necessarily in order or anything, but the first guy I have here is AP. Um, I just I, – I would put it in stone. He's going to get over 1,000 yards. He does it almost every single season. Yeah. Well, I made the case that he wasn't going to um, earlier. Uh, I, I do think Adrian Peterson's going to get 1,000 yards. He's on my list as well, uh, for all the reasons that he, he mentioned earlier. Uh, next guy up on my list is Lamar Miller. Uh, Miami had the least rushing attempts last year, despite the fact that Lamar Miller was averaging 4.5 yards per carry. Meanwhile, Houston was top five in the league in rushing attempts, despite a 3.7 yard per carry average from their running backs. So the Texans are running the ball even when it's not working. So obviously, with Lamar Miller coming in, a guy who can rush the ball, there's a good likelihood that he's going to get enough work and um, keep his yards per carry average and go over 1,000 yards this season. Yeah, Lamar Miller frustrated me frustrated me last year, but um, I love the situation for all the things he was just talking about. He's in my uh, top seven lockdown section as well. Who you got up next? Todd Gurley. He's Todd Gurley. He's like the younger man's AP. He only played 12 games. He had third most yards. He's going to get 1,000 yards. I would be very, very safe to say that. Yeah, barring an injury um, or the Rams offense just being so anemic, I agree. Todd Gurley makes it on my list as well. Next up, I've got LaShawn McCoy. Um, Buffalo had the second most rushing attempts in the league last year and the highest yards per carry average. Carlos Williams has the suspension. LaShawn McCoy is going to get enough work during the suspension to re-solidify his spot as the lead back in that backfield. And with a team that runs the ball all the time and runs it effectively, LaShawn McCoy is going over 1,000 yards this year. Yep. Hurts my heart. Um, Carlos Williams, huge fan. Loved him in college. I uh, was a big fan of him last year. I'm involved with him heavily in fantasy. Uh, I don't have McCoy here, but I can see everything you're saying, and I, I like it. Who do you have next up on your list? <sighs> next, I got a guy who might not be everyone's pick to have a big year next year, but uh, Matt Forte. I think he's probably got at least one more big season in him. He's relocating to the Jets. Uh, he's going to just get a lot of opportunity there, not much competition. Uh, his all-purpose yards, I, I would say, are safely over 1,000 to take a little Freeman anecdote there. But I think he could, uh, if healthy, get over 1,000 yards rushing. I do not have Matt Forte on my list. I think the age is a concern. Um, I don't think he makes it. Next up on my list, I have CJ Proceis, uh, probably the boldest call on my locks to get 1,000 yards. Seattle was number three in the league in rushing attempts and number seven in yards per carry last year. That was to the benefit of Thomas Rawls. Thomas Rawls broke his ankle when he started getting all the work. Uh, he was an undrafted free agent going into last year. I don't like his chances of hanging on to the starting job when they brought in a all-around back who has the size and speed of a prototypical NFL rusher. I think CJ Proseis takes the lead back role for the Seahawks and hits 1,000 yards this season. That's a bold call. Uh, I considered it, but just too many guys I liked ahead of him. Probably had about 13 names, as you indicated. So <laughs> he fell short of my top seven, that's for sure. You did have a rookie next up on your list, though, right? Uh, yeah. It's uh, a less surprising name to show up in a fantasy football discussion of 2016. Ezekiel Elliott. 
Uh, he's got a little bit of legal trouble right now, but he's got a, a crowded backfield, but I don't think it's going to matter. Um, the Cowboys invested in him heavily with that draft selection. I think they're going to let him pound the ball. Uh, they show they weren't, they didn't mind giving a guy a lot of work into Marco Murray a couple years ago. I think it could be the same thing. I think Elliot is safe to go over a thousand. Yeah, and uh, I've got him on my list also. Dallas was number five in the league in yards per carry with Darren McFadden being their lead back. I think Elliott has more talent at this point than Darren McFadden, um, so I like his chances to have a solid yards per carry clip and get over 1,000 yards this year. Um, Next up on my list, a guy I've already made the case for, Latavius Murray. Um, What do you think of his chances? Well, I argued against him in our uh, prior segment, but I like Murray to get over 1,000 yards again. Um, he's young. He's the guy there. That offense is uh, improving. I like everything about that offense in general. So, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a nice call. And last up on your list... I'm going to continue my admiration of the older running backs. Uh, this is my third guy that's a little bit longer in the tooth. Uh, Jamal Charles, uh, you know, had a second very serious injury of his career last year, but um, he bounced back really well last time. Whenever he's been healthy, he's been a complete stud, like one of my favorite players to watch uh, in an NFL game. Uh, that's a We saw last year that that is still an incredibly desirable position to be the lead rusher in Kansas City. Um, I expect Charles to reclaim that role and to, to do big things. What do you got next? Last guy on my list, another bit, one who uh, is not getting a lot of love here in the offseason, mostly because he busted for a lot of people last year. That's C.J. Anderson. I was totally out on him going into last year. I thought he was going too early in drafts. I was uh, lucky enough to avoid having him as he had a bad year. But the thing about his year is that he actually was very efficient when he did get opportunities. He had 4.7 yards per carry last year, which is exactly the same as his breakout year the year before. That's very consistently um, effective rushing. And Gary Kubiak, uh, the zone blocking, he always produces great rushers. The quarterback situation is less than ideal, um, no matter who the starter is. If it's Mark Sanchez, how often do you really want that guy throwing the ball? They're going to run the ball a lot. If C.J. Anderson can keep putting up 4.7 yards per carry, just give him the football. It's better than Mark Sanchez. (laughs) Okay, well, it's not better than Mark Sanchez. Um, So that was last year's 7 of Pro and Con. We discussed next year's top seven. Is there any uh, like fringy wild card guys you want to just like shout out and name that you know could maybe uh, get thousand yards next year? Um, so a real calls. wild card to get a thousand yards uh, would probably be Keith Marshall. If you watched um, our rookie ranking video, I'm in love with Keith Marshall. The size, the speed. Uh, the opportunity, Matt Jones can't hang on to the football, probably can't hang on to that job. I think Keith Marshall, if he gets the job early enough in the season, could have a 1,000 yards rushing easily. All right. I think that might, that might do it. That wraps us up. If you could please subscribe to our channel, uh, like this video, and we'll catch you next time on Fantasy Footnotes. All right. Thanks, guys.